just arrived at the RV Hall of Fame. They also have mobile homes inside. So uh, come on, let's go check it out. If you are interested in seeing a complete walkthrough through the museum, that is at the very end of this video. There is a video of a model manufacturing process. We apologize, we could have added it last week with our RV tours, but we kind of forgot we recorded it at the museum. Wow, and it's just a dinette that probably converts to a bed. This is a 1913 telescoping apartment. Oh, telescoping means the end of it would slide out. The little legs would help hold the end of it out. Some of the first pop-up trailers made out of canvas, wooden bars, stretchers. And look at set up, we can get extra sleep underneath. They say they switched to pneumatic tires instead of wagon wheels. These still have wagon wheels on it. Debbie's found another one. This one looks a little bit more substantial. It does. It's got more wood on it. We're making these in 1922. Okay. This is a 1928 Pierce Arrow house car. This is one of only three that were made in the United States before the stock market crash. It's a 1931 May West house car. It was offered as an enticement by Paramount Studios to May West to get her to come to them. Well, this one even has a back porch on it. This wagon is covered with genuine leather edge over plywood. The roof is coated, stretched canvas over tar paper. This is a 1935 Volus Road Chief. Something I thought that was interesting is how they opened their screen door. The actual door just had a part that would open up and now you have a screen door. the 1939 Lindbergh travel trailer custom built for the famous aviator Charles Lindbergh. They have skin and aluminum but what really attracts my attention is that it has dual axles so they didn't have to support it. Have you ever seen a dual axle travel trailer before? The one that's spread out like a car? I have been checking out different travel trailers and this first one we saw that has the bathroom installed. Yep, those aren't pecans. That's a pecan and a bathtub. The 1954 Shasta trailer 
before they start putting the logo wings on the back where the windows are currently. But this one we can actually go in. Has a dinette, a stove, an ice box, and it has a gravity fed water system. And a bunk bed. Cot style. Another bed there. So that's a 1954 Yellowstone travel trailer and it's considered one of the higher ends with residential style oven and refrigerator. And it has a rear door but that was considered only for a panic or emergency use. Me. What's next Debbie? I'm starting to recognize some of these uh, camping gear. You're old because this is all from 1957. <laughs> Would be cozy sleeping in that. So this one's pretty cool. It's a rear entry travel trailer, 12 feet long. And maybe hard to tell, but they have a little dip here. And that's so you can stand upright and work in the kitchen. nineteen sixty eight carriage travel trailer one of the first ones to have fiberglass end caps look how wide it is kitchen the medic refrigerator sleeping areas and the first time I've seen a lantern this one has a full bathroom, bathtub, shower, gravity dump toilet, and sink. And version 1.0 of the command hooks. Hey, find anything interesting? This right. one has a full rear bath, paper cup dispenser, convenient bottle opener. Oh look, cherry cloth curtains. When you wash your hands, you can just dry them. <laughs> I think our moms would say no. Nineteen sixty four Clark Cortez Motorhome. It's claim to fame. This is one of the first front wheel drive motorhomes. A nice wide bench seat up front for passengers. Fur covered driver's seat. Rear entry. Another early version of the wet bath. The medic refrigerator with soft sides. Stove. Furnace heat. And somehow this dinette folds up to make an upper and lower bunk beds. This pop-up is very similar to the one that I had when I was growing up. One difference was the kitchen was on this side of the camper and not that side. And the kitchen, which was the stove and the sink, swung out so you could cook outside. Behind the curtains are the slide-out beds on each side. Welcome to a tour of our model recreation vehicle manufacturing plant. This is a 124th scale model, which means that if it takes a full size plant, there would be approximately 96 feet wide by 360 feet long. While no two RV manufacturing plants are laid out exactly the same, 
and certainly the RVs themselves have design differences, there are some typical similarities in production. The travel trailers and fifth wheels in this model are built on an assembly line that is comprised of 16 workstations. Workers are assigned to a specific station and often perform the same job functions for efficiency. When the work is completed at a given station, the workers at that station then advance the trailer sideways on carriages to the next station. We're going to take a look inside the 1934 Schultz mobile home. Has a kitchen, a little stove back there, dining table, couch. I wonder if that's the bathroom behind that door, just a closet. This is a 1955 Spartan Imperial Mansion. I believe it. I've been inside and it's pretty fancy. Let's take you in and check it out. I was going to pretend to drink a cup of coffee, but they're both down. Oh, and you broke it. Whoops. <laughs> Still smells like cigarette smoke. <laughs> Does it smell or is it just old memories? <laughs> Touche. I mean, when I grew up, I was living in a mobile home. Yes, so was I. I'll be honest, this is a lot nicer than one we lived in, even though it's older. I think this room was bigger than the room we had in our mobile home. But what do I know? I was only six when I moved to our house. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, the avocado green. So we know that's not an original toilet. And the master. This thing's giant. It is. That is a lot of drawers. It is. And it has its own house bath in here. Nice tall ceilings. <laughs> Simon says game. <laughs> Record player. Yep. Definitely didn't want to walk around the trailer while the records are playing. How old were you when you moved out of the mobile home? Eight. All right, I'll be honest. First time I saw this, I'm thinking matchbox cars, but it's actually a concept of a high rise for mobile homes they have foundations and you drive your mobile home up into it and uh, park it and you have a whole neighborhood we just finished the rv museum and it was very very cool they have several and i say several probably i don't know a hundred or more rvs in there dating all the way back to 1913. it was very interesting the layout was great because you went through a path and that allowed them to put in different types of RVs and travel trailers and it was just amazing. We really hope you'll enjoy the pictures and videos we were able to grab inside. They were a lot of fun. We got to go inside probably, oh I don't know, 60% of the RVs there because of some of their age and rarity. We could not go in about 40%.